Good morning. I am Claire Steiner, and I'm in ninth grade at Pineview School. Our scripture passage for today comes from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 17th verse. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Claire. Thank Claire is one of our confirmation students going to join the church in a little bit from now. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all these students in confirmation who are learning about you and your love, your love and their place in your love. Thank you for Claire who read the scripture this morning to us. And now we pray that may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today, unlike any other time that I preach, I would like to start with a personal confession. I understand that this is a very important day in this nation, and there will be, it is a Super Bowl Sunday, and this evening there will be a very important American football game. And the whole world would be watching it on TV, I'm told. Well, I know nothing about American football, so there will be no mention of Super Bowl in the sermon. <laughs> in case you're wondering, I just want to declare my ignorance and save you from listening for some Super Bowl comments in the sermon. I do have a tendency of watching it, or sort of kind of watching it, and uh, just to see the commercials and that show in the middle of the game. <laughs> and please, no trying to educate me on the game. Many have tried and failed before you. <laughs> but actually, oh yes, not because of Pastor Steve, I do know Cincinnati Bengals are playing. My friend James Thompson nearly fainted in my office on Friday because I didn't know who they were. <laughs> Obviously, it is James's favorite team. So, end of confession on Super Bowl. Brother Lawrence was a monk in 1600s. He became a monk at age 18. One wintry day, before he became a monk, he was looking at a barren tree or a tree with no leaves. Although the leaves were all gone, Brother Lawrence knew they would soon reappear, followed by blossom and fruit. This gave him a profound impression of God's providence and power which never left him. Seeing God's providence gave Brother Lawrence a great love for God and did not change for the rest of his life. Brother Lawrence found profound joy in doing everything out of love for God. While working at a shoe repair shop, 
Brother Lauren said to a friend that he would be willing to work anywhere, always rejoicing at being able to do little things for the love of God. I also read that Brother Lawrence was a cook at a monastery for 15 years. He didn't like it at first, being the cook, and he was very clumsy all the way through. He expected God to punish him for his clumsiness. However, rather than punishing him, God gave him nothing but wholehearted satisfaction. The eager, penitent brother Lawrence became the joyous child of God who delighted in experiencing the presence of God. In today's scripture that Claire read to us, Jesus came down the mountain with his 12 apostles and disciples, and he healed all who are sick and brought to him. Then Jesus raised his eyes to the disciples. Jesus preached his sermon on the plain. The highlight of the sermon is the Beatitudes or blessings. Jesus said, blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry now. Blessed are you who weep now. Blessed are you when people revile you. In that sermon, the direct speech message of Jesus is that God loves the poor, the hungry, those who mourn, and those who are reviled or hated. Dean Peter Eaton of St. John's Cathedral in Denver tells us that the gospel writer Luke sees God as the God of all those who have nothing but God. Several years ago, my husband Will Brown was part of a mission team that traveled to Tibet. They met a man who was very poor. He said his father had been a beggar and his father's father had been a beggar also. The man was poor and had no education. He couldn't write, he was lost in numbers. He told the visitors from the state that I am the son of the son of a beggar and I don't think I can be any different. Yet this man was joyful as he could be. I remember Will telling me the story when he came home. This man accepted his life and his limitations, yet somehow he was all right and rejoiced in life. Jesus tells us in Luke's Beatitudes that God loves and blesses people who are poor. This man in Tibet is one who has nothing but God. I believe that Jesus wanted all his followers, including us today, to acknowledge that the poor, the hungry, those who mourn and those who are reviled or hatred are loved by God all the same. Jesus commands us to love people who suffer, who suffer real poverty, oppression, and captivity. One of the many ways we can respond to this command of Jesus is like Martha Church, by giving our tithings and offerings generously to God and participate in ministries and missions of the church. After all, we do belong to Church of the Palms where we help the poor, feed the hungry every day, comfort the grieving and much more locally, regionally, nationally and globally. First Samuel chapter two, verse seven tells us, the Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. Our place in life is neither an achievement of our own doing nor a punishment for our own deserving. Therefore, we do not get to judge one another. Instead, we get to rejoice in all things. The harsh realities are already being turned upside down by the power of God's love. This world is already different because God treats people differently with love, forgiveness, and grace. The kingdom of God is already happening. God loves each and every one of us. 
whether we are wealthy or we are poor in body, mind, and spirit, Jesus tells us that we are blessed by God. Because we believe this, we can join the Apostle Paul in saying, as found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, Rejoice in the Lord. Always again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Remembering we live in the presence of God, let us rejoice in all things. Amen. <laughs>